Hey, morning guys, I'm the Tech Prepper. Hope you're all doing well. Just a quick video today. I'm evaluating the BTEC UV Pro. I almost discounted that radio, and I decided now that I've got basic plug and play support with no wires, I wanna see if I can connect to my BBS station at the house. More on what that is in another video. And uh, here's the current setup. I've got the Hill People Gear chest rig, and then taking the place of what normally would be my Yaesu VX6R, I've got the BTEC Pro mounted inside of the FT60 pouch from specter gear now i still have my vx6 with me because i trust this guy a whole lot more mounted in that spot where i normally would have a water bottle have the headlamp on actually this is a pretty cool headlamp i'm gonna have to do a video on this at some point but it's from a collab collaboration with pale blue and wolfgang and what i like about this even though it just has one two settings and off it runs on one freaking battery one double a battery uh, I've had issues in the past where multiple batteries were required and if one failed, I was out of luck. And I'm also running their newer uh, lithium ion rechargeable AA batteries that they also sent me. So gonna go hit the trail before work and uh, we're gonna go ahead and see how field expedient the BTEC UV Pro is. All right, so the goal here is to see if this actually is field expedient and it's 717 local time. So we're gonna turn on our UV Pro. Open up the chest rig here, pull out the FZM1, and boot it up, and I'm running the Mark II here. Uh, one thing that does concern me, uh, since I'm not going to be holding the radio, is that I don't have a ground plane, so we're missing half the antenna, but that's part of the test here. So let's boot up, and uh, the goal is to see how quickly I can connect to the BBS back at my house using the software that I have written that hopefully makes this field expedient. All right, so we're gonna log in here. So about 40 seconds just to boot the computer. Uh, I can't do anything about that speed. So here's the moment of truth. We are going to run the um, ETUV Pro Connect command. And we'll see if this works. Again, I've got a lot of granite here, a lot of rock in the way. And uh, it's going through the process of connecting from the Bluetooth device to the radio and if this works we should be able to then establish our connection and it looks like we're actually good at least in terms of ease of pairing in the field and then i'm going to rerun my command to connect to my bbs and it's ax call packet 1200 and then the station my station is ttp bbs yeah the lack of a ground plane might be an option here let's go ahead and pull this bad boy out and we are on the packet mode, we are on high power. Yeah, this is not looking good because I can typically do this test with the um, DigiRig light. Let's go ahead and drop this back in the chest rig. We'll walk around a little bit here. This is why I love coming out here and testing, folks. All right, we're gonna do this even more with the cheat. We're gonna put this guy right on the screen and we're gonna establish the ground plane and I'll hold the radio. Now I'm waiting for a BNC adapter for this so that I could connect my J-pole. I've had to do that in the past. All right, this doesn't look like it's gonna happen. Uh, let's go ahead and move to higher ground. But yeah, this one's a fail in comparison to my Yesu rigs. They both can do this no problem. I'm about... Uh, what was it, 4.4 kilometers out, so about two and a half miles out, and then point to point about a mile and a half or 2,400 meters. Oh, almost there. Hopefully this is a, a couple hundred feet. Great sunset, or great sunrise. All right, so there's some wind noise up here, so apologies, we're gonna go connect one more time. And that's pretty quick, so I had to get to a better position for uh, line of sight. So here's my vantage point, guys. So kind of nice being uh, fully hands-free here. And uh, I'm gonna compose, uh, 
a quick message. Actually, I'm going to log into my BBS application. Should have brought the dead cat mic. Connected to the BBS. And I'm going to send a uh, bulletin to everybody. And this is a way for me to notify my entire group what's going on. Everybody can log into the BBS. That's a couple miles from my location. Shoot. All right, guys, so I've got that message uh, composed and I put, um, oh, I can't see the, uh, the message anymore because uh, I uh, already sent it off. But let's go ahead and see what I actually had to do. I hope I don't crack the screen on this one. And again, apologies for the wind noise. So not ideal, but uh, that's the nice thing about Bluetooth. All right, guys, time to pack up. And uh, actually, let's get to a quiet spot and let me give you some final thoughts on what I think about the UV Pro. Granted, I'm very new to this. So before I head down the hill, let's go ahead and try VHF, UHF voice. I have not tried that. I manually programmed it. It's really easy on this radio. I was surprised. Uh, a lot of like the commercial DMR radios, although this is not a DMR radio, makes it very difficult without the software. This makes it a breeze. From the menu, I'm gonna go ahead and go to channel. I'm on channel 19, which is my packet. And I'm gonna move down with the left arrow key down to channel one. And I manually program this repeater that's about five miles from my location. High power. This is KT7 RUN Hilltop Portable, testing out the BTEC UV Pro for the first time. I'm wondering if anybody can come back to me with a signal report. Again, the call here is KT7 RUN Hilltop Portable, looking for a first contact on the BTEC UV Pro and a signal report. We got into the repeater. It's 7.30. Wake up, guys. Been up since 0300. Actually, no, 0230 this morning. Wow. Nobody's on. The station that broadcasted. This is KF7 PDK here in Scottsdale, Arizona. I had the volume turned down on the radio here on the Metro Link, but um, I did hear uh, you're requesting a signal report. Yeah, you're hitting the repeater quite well. Um, Sit back down. Sounds like you're mobile, but uh, good signal. KF7 PBK. KF7 PBK from Scottsdale. Thank you for the report. I'm out here uh, in New River, Arizona and just did a trail run testing out a new radio that uh, I picked up for the holidays. So thanks again, and 7.3's KT7 RU1. Did it. Sorry about the audio, guys. Like KT7 I said. RU1, copy that. Uh, happy to help. Have a good uh, Friday on the trail ride. Sounds like fun. KF7 PVK, clear and monitor. It's got good audio. I'm kind of a fan, guys. I'm a big fan of my tools, not toys philosophy and finding a uh, practical use for my equipment. And I will tell you first and foremost, this is not really replacing anything. Uh, the intended purpose for this radio is exactly for what I'm doing here. It's for me to take out on the trail run, have the IP67 ish rating. Um, it's not fully sealed in my opinion because there are no gaskets and my water test revealed that after being submerged at a depth of one meter for about five and a half minutes, that water got into the SMA connector and also the, uh, the battery uh, tray itself. Uh, no big deal, everything is working fine, but this radio is gonna be for me to be hands-free, connected probably to my FZM1, and doing very basic packet work. Uh, I'm primarily gonna be using this to connect to uh, my BBS and BBSs in the area. I'm gonna do a full video on why a BBS in 2025 what my practical uh, scenarios are for that, how to get going, all the basic concepts, gear, etc. But uh, I'm gonna say uh, the BTEC is a keeper. I actually ordered two of these recently, actually yesterday morning after the dunk test. I ordered a second one for myself and then one for uh, the gentleman who helps me out with my live streams and is actually becoming a really cool comms buddy. And he's out here in Tucson. In fact, he's 120 miles from my location and he's able to make it through two digipeters 
into my home BBS. So chances are good that if I were to pop out the gear again, uh, he would already be replying to that bulletin I posted. So big takeaway guys, uh, this radio has a lot of features. I'm not planning on using it in the traditional sense that the hamsters are probably gonna be looking at it uh, with the application for APRS and the mapping. I don't wanna use this with a phone. Uh, the only phone integration I plan to do with this is just when I get my second unit for myself personally to pair it just so I can upgrade the firmware and then I'm never touching it again. All of the programming I do here will be manual. And again, my use case is just uh, Bluetooth TNC packet work and then VHF, UHF monitoring with something that I can uh, bang around up here and sweat all over. All right, be strong, be safe, and be prepared.